On 4th January 2023, Indian government has approved the National Green Hydrogen Mission and the initial budget for this mission is 19,500 crore. The goal of this mission is to produce green hydrogen with capacity of 5 million metric ton per annum that would generate additional renewable energy of 125 gigawatt by 2030. The scale of this mission can be gauged from the fact that Indian government is targeting an investment worth 8 lakh crore in this area that would also result in employment for 6 lakh people. After this announcement of green hydrogen mission, I have received multiple queries to review a stock that could potentially benefit from this mission and can generate multi-bagger returns. So here I am with an in-depth review of one such small cap stock that can potentially create multi-bagger returns. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Pursa Finance Academy. In one of the conference, Indian Union Road Transport and Highway Minister Mr. Nitin Gadkari has mentioned that green hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Well, that is a big statement. And I'm sure majority of us don't really understand what exactly is this green hydrogen. So in this video, I'm going to explain what is green hydrogen and why it is called a fuel of the future. And then I'm going to discuss one such small cap stock that is working on clean energy segment and can potentially benefit from this mission. Just to give you an idea, this company had its IPO in 2021. So it's been just two years since IPO and I have already covered this stock during its IPO. It currently has a market cap of around 5,200 crore and I have also added this stock in my portfolio. And now it is part of my fifth episode of this series on next multibagger stock. Stock name is MTAR Technology. Although I have already covered MTAR and its business during its IPO, but now I am adding it in my next multibagger list. So those who are here just to know the stock name can skip the video because in the next 15 minutes, I am going to dig deep into what is green hydrogen and business of MTER along with its future prospect, leadership, financials, key strength, risk and finally the valuation. But before we begin, this video is only for educational purpose. Make sure that you do a thorough research before investing your money. And the stock that I cover in this series are fundamentally strong. It means if there is correction in the share price, then it only creates a buy opportunity. So far I have discussed KPIT, Apple India, MapMy India and Dixon Technology. All these stocks are worth adding in SIP mode and buy more on dips. Last week Dixon Technology has corrected after the results but it has only created an opportunity to accumulate Dixon in a systematic manner for wealth creation in the next 5, 10, 20 years. So my videos are only helpful if you are a long term investor. Alright, now let's get started. Over the last few years, entire world is witnessing the ill effect of rising global warming. Hence, every country including India is now committing for reducing carbon footprint. India has set a target to become carbon neutral by 2070. And to achieve this goal, Indian government has taken various steps and one such measure is prioritizing the adoption of green hydrogen. So hydrogen is one of the most abundant element on our planet and it can be used as a clean fuel in power intensive industries like your oil production, steel production, chemical sector and can be used in auto sector as an alternative to petrol and diesel. In fact, there are already more than 18,000 hydrogen run car in the world and car companies all over the world are creating the new prototypes of hydrogen car. Now you must be confused between electric car and hydrogen car. So please note that hydrogen fuel is not replacing the electric cars. It is an alternative to batteries where electricity can be produced from hydrogen to run the car. Moreover, hydrogen can also be used to heat our homes and store renewable electricity. But there is only one problem. Hydrogen is very reactive molecule and hence it is not available freely. For example, it is available in water that comprises of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So to get hydrogen, you need to extract it from elements like water. And it is a very energy intensive process. As of today, the hydrogen is extracted from fossil fuel and it's a pollution heavy process. For example, today nearly 42% hydrogen comes from natural gas, 41% from fossil fuel and 19% from coal. So brown hydrogen is made from coal, grey and blue hydrogen is produced from fossil fuel and natural gas. But the process to extract brown, grey and blue hydrogen generates lot of pollution. And that's where green hydrogen has come into picture. So there is a method called electrolysis to extract hydrogen from water. And if the electricity required for this process comes from renewable sources like your solar, wind, etc., 
then it is called green hydrogen and this green hydrogen is considered as fuel of the future. Just to give you an idea about the seriousness of this project, Europe plans to invest $1 trillion to make it climate neutral by 2050 and half of its money would be invested in hydrogen. And all the other countries are eyeing on hydrogen production including US, China, Japan and so on. And that's where India is also eyeing on creating a green hydrogen economy in India. In fact, recently Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav announced that India will have its first hydrogen train designed and manufactured locally by December 23 on Kalka Shimla circuit. So as far as future is concerned, it can potentially be a huge billions of dollar worth of industry. But today, green hydrogen production is very costly. And hence, Indian government has come up with a green hydrogen mission to push the adoption of green hydrogen. Now the question is, who will benefit from this green hydrogen? And that's where MTAR can hugely benefit from this trend. Let's have a look at its business in detail. Incorporated in 1970, MTAR is a leading precision engineering company engaged in manufacturing of mission critical precision components with close tolerances in the range of 5 to 10 microns that are used to serve projects of high national importance. Here please understand that precision engineering products are specially important for critical applications such as your aviation, aerospace, space, defense and nuclear power plants as well as control equipment for process plants where small error can cause huge damage. For example, in nuclear sector, a failure of small fitting component can lead to catastrophic long term effect. So component tolerance and fit is very critical from safety and operational point of view. Otherwise, a small fit error can wipe out years of efforts and R&D. To avoid such error, precision engineering is very critical for strategic sectors such as your defense, nuclear, space, aviation and so on. And that's where MTR has created a niche for itself in Indian precision engineering industry and is today counted among the top three suppliers that cater to precision engineering requirement of Indian nuclear defense and space sector. Some of the clients of MTR technologies include top Indian organizations such as your ISRO, DRDO, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Hindustan Aeronautics, Nuclear Power Corporation of India and so on. It speaks everything about the quality of MTAR products. MTAR is also one of the key supplier to Bloom Energy, which is the largest player globally in fuel energy space as per 2019 revenues. MTAR has currently seven manufacturing facilities situated in Hyderabad. Now, if you look at the revenue breakup by segment, its products can be categorized in three segments. Clean energy, nuclear segment, and space and defense segment. Clean energy is the largest contributor in company's revenue and contributed 63% in FY22 revenue followed with nuclear segment with 14% contribution and space and defense contributed 18%. As far as products are concerned, within clean energy segment, MTAR manufactures power units, specifically hot boxes and supplies prototypes of hydrogen boxes and electrolyzers. Here currently more than 90% revenue comes from Bloom Energy which is a global leader in solid oxide fuel cell and clean energy segment is expected to grow multiple times in the next few years. Then within nuclear segment, company manufactures complex mission critical component and assemblies such as fuel machining head, then your drive mechanism, bridge and column and coolant channel assemblies for nuclear reactor. Then within space and defense, MTAR manufactured the engine for PSLV C25 that is your Mangalayan mission and PSLV C49. MTR was also integral to designing GSLV Mark III engine for the Chandrayaan 2 mission. Company is now bidding for designing and manufacturing full small satellite launch vehicle. It also supply critical components like your actuators, gyro and motor body. MTR has currently order book of 1,288 crore against your training 12 month sale of 394 crore. So currently order book is more than three times the revenue. By the way, I've also discussed this talk in my weekly video series after the announcement of green hydrogen mission from Indian government. So in case you are not aware, I have an exclusive weekly video series where I share one video per week and discuss stocks that I'm adding in my portfolio, then key events in the economy and its impact on stock market, as well as I cover the quarterly results of important companies. In case you want to explore the course, I provided the link below. Now as far as future is concerned, everyone knows that Indian government has already banned the import of various defense equipment and given priority to indigenous companies. 
and that's where MPR with 50 years of experience is very well positioned with top-notch clients including your ISRO, DRDO, HAL, NPCIL etc. On top of that, the latest plan of Indian government to create a huge ecosystem around green hydrogen has created limitless possibility for MTR which is currently just a 5200 crore market cap. MTR is already expanding its production capacity and adding new plant in Hyderabad. Moreover, it is working on a lot of new critical components like design of walls that has immense potential in defense. Then it is in the process of developing semi Cairo engine, the next generation liquid propulsion engine that enhances the payload carrying capacity of GSLV Mark III from 4 ton to 6 ton. Its first engine is expected to be rolled out by Q4 of FI23. Then MTR has also started manufacturing electrolyzers that break water into hydrogen and oxygen to produce methane free hydrogen, which can be used in multiple segments to generate power. Hence, on business and future growth, I would rate MTAR 10 on 10. Now the biggest question is, what is the moat that is the key strength of the company that makes it stands out as a multi-bagger for the future? So its first strength is more than 50 years of experience in precision engineering sector. Over the last 50 years, MTAR has established itself as one of the key player in its sector with deep relationship with its client. For example, ISRO is client of MTAR for three decades and DRDO for four decades. NPCIL is client of MTR for 16 years, then MTR is also working with Bloom Energy for 9 years now. So the business where MTR operates require huge experience and deep relationship with top clients that create a very high entry barrier and a thick moat for MTR. Another big strength of company is its leadership. We will discuss it shortly. Now if you look at the key risk, its first risk is high dependence on Bloom Energy. So Bloom Energy is a US based company that specializes in solid oxide fuel cell to generate electricity by an electrochemical reaction instead of burning a fuel. So Bloom Energy dominates the global solid oxide fuel cell with 60% of global market share. Although the future prospects of Bloom Energy are very bright, but in FY22, 63% of MTER business came from Bloom Energy. So currently there is a lot of dependence on a single company. And this is one of the key risks. Ideally, you don't want high dependency on a few clients. Apart from this, there is more risk with financials. So company has a high working capital cycle with high inventory days and high receivable days. One of the key reasons for high working capital was due to COVID that resulted in supply chain disruption. Due to that, company's cash from operation went negative in 2022. So this is one area where MTR has to ensure better cash conversion to remain cash positive. Overall, Considering the key strength and risk, I would rate it 8 on 10. If you look at the leadership of the company, Mr. P.S. Reddy is the MD and promoter of the company. He has over 30 years of experience in the industry. He has done his master's in science with specialization in industrial engineering from Lusania Tech University. Then Mr. Devesh Dhadivedi is the chief operating officer of the company. He is an alumni of NIT Allahabad and ISB Hyderabad. Before MTR, he has worked with companies like Bharat Forge, DRDO, etc. Overall, the leadership of the company is very competent and experienced. Hands on leadership, I would rate it 10 on 10. Now, if you look at revenue growth of MTER, it has grown from 101 crore in FI17 to levels of 394 crore in trailing 12 months. Look at the consistent growth in revenues over the last five and a half year, and the CGR rate is 28, which is brilliant. Then, if you look at the profit growth, Profits have grown from minus 15 crore in 2017 to current levels of 75 crore in trailing 12 months. And if you look at profit from March 2020, it has grown at 42% CAGR which is again exceptional. Next on operating margin front, companies consistently on high operating margin and its latest operating margin stood at 28%. If you look at the ROE and ROCE, it has consistently improved over the last few years and if you look at the latest ROE, it stood at 13.3% and ROC stood at 15.4%. So on ROE and ROC, profitability is decent. Then if you look at debt to equity, again companies consistently well under control and the latest debt to equity is 0.24. And finally, if you look at cash from operation, it was cash positive over the years, but in 2022, it has become cash negative and it is due to supply chain disruption due to COVID and that resulted in increase in working capital days. Overall on financials, I would rate it 8 on 10. So MTR launched its IPO in March 2021 
and I discussed it in depth in one of my video. At that time, its IPO price was 575 rupee and it got still a response with IPO subscribing 200 times. One of the reason was of course the IPO boom of 2021. So by end of 2021, MTR was touching levels of 2500. However, then we saw slowdown in 2022 that resulted in share touching lows of 1200. Currently, MTR is trading at levels of 1700. As far as valuation is concerned, it commands a P ratio of 70, which is on the higher side. Hence, on valuation, I would rate MTR 7 on 10. However, the market is giving premium to MTR due to its leadership in clean fuel segment that has immense growth potential. In fact, I was looking at its shareholding pattern and it seems DIS also love this stock. They are holding huge stake in the company and they have consistently increased stake from 23.46% in March 22 to 27.26, 27.74 and now 28.31%. Clearly DIS are also very bullish on this stock and it include your Nippon Mutual Fund, Invesco Fund House, XS Fund House, Aditya Billa Fund House, UTI Fund House, SDFC Fund House. So all these fund houses holding MTR says everything about the company future potential. Personally, I think that MTR is one SIP grade stock that can be added systematically and if there is any correction, then MTR can be accumulated further. Having said this, I would strongly encourage you to do your own analysis. Overall, if we summarize, there is immense growth potential in green hydrogen fuel and MTAR being a leading player in clean fuel segment with decades of experience and strong relationship with Indian companies like ISRO, DRDO and global leaders like Bloom Energy is bound to grow. On company business and its future prospect, I've rated it 10 on 10. On key strength and risk, I've rated it 8 on 10. On leadership, I've rated it 10 on 10. On financials, I've rated it 8 on 10. And finally, on valuation, I've rated it 7 on 10. So that's a total score of 43 out of 50. Now tell me, what is your view on MTR technology? I hope you'll find this analysis useful. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.